Hey, what's up, y'all? It's Christian Sneaker Professor back with another article that I'm moving from the website here to YouTube so that you guys can participate in the dialogue that I'm creating on LinkedIn and on the website. So let's get into today's article, which once again takes us into the realm of Adidas. And this is not a bad thing, but let's get to the article. You see it over here to my side. It's in the description. Um, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, make sure you subscribe. I'm doing more of these discussions that come from the website, which tend to be long written pieces. So this just gives you a chance to listen to them without having to go and read them. And if you're enjoying it, please thumbs up. Uh, here we go. The 2023 collection, chapter two from Adidas basketball. And the subheading is it's hard to not see fear of God. It's hard not to see easy either. It's, it's just hard not to see it. But that's not necessarily a bad thing because at All-Star Weekend last weekend, Adidas presented their collection. And I have to admit, man, the stuff looks good. The shoes look good. The shoes look good. The, the clothing feels familiar. I didn't think you could fix the crazy one, um, but they fixed it. They fixed it. A lot of people didn't like this shoe because, you know, it was supposed to be made like an Audi TT and that whole foam posit look was just bad. They've corrected it. And this thing over here, I don't know what it's called yet, but it looks amazing. Um, obviously, the retro with the forms and the top tens that are going to be coming, the signature basketball shoes, your trays, your uh, Donovan Mitchell, the T-Mac down at the bottom. And I'm pretty sure that's hardened up at the top, which leaves out D-Rose. So I don't know what's up with that. This is Candace Parker. These are the aces. These are the aces, the Candace Parker shoes. So the women are represented, the men are represented, uh, they are represented. Look at me, I'm being inclusive. Um, let's keep rolling and look at the rest of these photos, which are incredible from Adidas. So remember that I do like the layout of what they did in All-Star Weekend, but... That looks like a Yeezy photo. I don't care what. That looks like a Yeezy photo. It just does. Anyway, let's jump back over here to the article and get to reading. So the chapter two, beginning with chapter one, remember the why. It's a premium exhibition and in intentional design, versatile footwear and apparel line balances, bold simplicity, ultra premium materials. Today, Adidas Basketball presents 2023 collection chapter two. And um, to add a little bit of levity, instead of just getting straight into it and being serious, I'm going to drop my high school basketball picture. It's going to show my age, but it's also going to show that I am not an Adidas hater. Here's my love for Patrick Ewan and Adidas. That's my high school picture. You see the number 33 wristband and our team colors were green and white, but I'm wearing blue, orange, and white Ewings. All right. Now that that's out of the way and you stop laughing, stop laughing. Seriously. I decided to share this picture. Because at one point, Nike wasn't the dominant brand. Converse and Adidas owned basketball. Nike was on the rise, of course, and Jordan brand was coveted, but it wasn't even a Jordan brand back then. It was just Air Jordan. No one hooped in Jordans, except the guys that were Division I locks, dudes that were going straight to the D1, and you knew they were going to either end up being pros or whatever. Uh, but nobody hooped in Jordans, the only people that wore them were dope boys because they were the only ones that could afford them. So the dudes that wore a hooping at them, somebody bought them and who knows why they bought them, but that's a completely different story and we're not getting into that. Nike at that time did capture a lot of teams with their uh, Dunk series and the Deltas and the Alpha. And if you remember that time all the way through, phone just buzzed so i'm just moving it over here they did start picking up steam and a lot of steam but of course converse and adidas was killing it and that's just the way it was cons the weapons things like that in the 80s 90s awesome the adidas remember the why campaign there's this huge opportunity for the brand to make serious waves because like i said when you look through these photos the stuff looks incredible, man. 
It looks incredible. And I'm just leaving it there. That looks incredible. This has a great opportunity to make waves and allow us to recapture the essence of hoop. But this latest photo shoot that they did, not this, the one that you see here next to me, it feels forced and a bit hollow. So you look at that photo, and I know this dude, uh, anyway. Um, but even worse is that there are echoes of fear of God. And without the connection to Jerry Lorenzo, it feels that the brand is trying to manipulate nostalgia. And they're doing that as opposed to trying to capture and show love to what basketball meant to, means to all of us, right? And I put my picture up here at the start, which I'm going to quit going back to for fun. But I wanted to stress that the concept of remember the why, it should be landing and resonating through generations, but it isn't. All I can see when looking at this collection is this collection. And it's going to get more profound. I'm going to show more pictures. And looking at the Nike Fear of God collection isn't fair to Adidas. Because the second installment of Remember the Why arrives with my favorite sneaker of all time, the rivalry. Or what's in my head forever, the Ewings. And maybe that's the issue. So when I look at these Ewings, the rivalry, when I see that shoe and I remember the why, right? When I come back here and I, I think of all of that, this is what I should be recalling. I should remember when I first dunked on an outdoor court in North Memphis at Bigfoot Community Center on a Lord and 10 foot rim. And then I first dunked at basketball practice in the ninth grade. All of that took place in Adidas footwear. My first official dunk attempt in the game happened my 10th grade year against a neighborhood rival. And I took off from almost like the free throw line. It was wild. And the dude flipped me and I hit my head. I got up and made my free throws. As a matter of fact, that might be that. No, nah, that was against the neighborhood rival White Haven. The team shoe back then was the Nike Delta in green and white. But I wore the kicks in that pick with a wristband, just like Patrick Ewan. I should be remembering the why. I shouldn't be remembering Jerry Lorenzo and Nike when I look at these pictures. And then when I look at these pictures, it gets worse because when I see this picture right here, this one that's right here, you see this? The first thought is that dude can't hoop. I don't see the gear. I don't see the kicks. I see a manufactured moment and that sucks. Because right now, when retro basketball is hitting hard and resonating at retail, I should be focused on the fact that the rivalry high and low both ring up at $110 and they look incredible. I should really be remembering the why and connecting to the now of going to the park with who I am now trying to get these shots up. And although I can no longer dunk, and I hurt like hell when I get into a pickup game. I should remember the why. And I'm not when I see this picture. As I look at it and I realize that Adidas just made some of the prettiest rivalry retro sneakers. These are fresh. I don't I love each one of these shoes. I should be pulling my card out, buying a pair right now, but something's not connecting for me. And this is the bad thing. Adidas basketball, for me, it's muscle memory. It's in my DNA. Just as much as Nike and Jordan and Converse. But if you're going to give me imagery, that imagery has to generate some emotion, right? What sucks for Adidas is no matter what is done with Remember the Why in this series, no matter what is done, 
as good as these sneakers look, it'll be immediately compared to the Nike drops from Fear of God. And the Adidas drops will feel like a cheat since Jerry Lorenzo is not involved. And that's a shame. Because these kicks, I love this model, this high right here. That speaks to me. I love it. They're on par with anything that's arriving in retro hoops footwear right now. But the problem is I can't unsee fear of God. So I'm going to leave you with these alternating shots of Nike times fear of God in Adidas basketball chapter two. They're not exactly the same, but when I see the Adidas pictures, I automatically think about that collection with Nike. That's a bad thing. It doesn't bring about nostalgia. It actually hurts the Adidas drop. So here are these pictures. The first one is Nike times fear of God from 2019. The next one is Adidas, fear of God. Three people, three people, Sitting with muted colors, neutrals, grays. It's the same thing. But in this photo, you know what I see? I see the raid, or I actually see, yeah, that's the raid, Fear of God, which was an incredible shoe. And here I get a toned down Adidas rivalry, which is my favorite shoe, but it doesn't even stand out. In this picture that just feels like a copy of the Nike picture. I roll down to the next photo, which is Fear of God again. And this is the Fear of God one on feet. And then I go down here and this is chapter two for Adidas. Muted. This picture does not hit like this picture. <sighs> The people that did this photo shoot, and you hate to talk bad about a photo shoot because somebody did that work. But when I see this with the air raid, she looks like she can dribble. She looks like she hoops. And that Fear of God collection from Nike, when it did come out, that thing sold out immediately. I know Jerry Lorenzo is not involved. And I'm not saying this girl can't hoop. But... There's a swoosh. You can barely see the Adidas here. And I understand 2019 is a different time than 2023 and that we're going with a no logo, but on the back of these clothes are huge logos. I still can't help but see Jerry Lorenzo's fear of God in every picture. And I hate that because I really do love this shoe. And I love that one. And I like this one. I don't like this one as much as I like this gray suede joint. But at 110, man, the shoes should be front and center. Um, better styling should be taking places in these pictures. And this dude, maybe he can light me up from the outside. I have no idea. But when I look at that picture, all I see is, nah, son can't hoop. And when I look at everything, all I see is fear of God. Until I see this and then I see myself. But that's it. I'm going to wrap that up. And if you guys are interested in reading this article, like I said, it's on the site. Um, subscribe to the channel. Still going to be doing a lot of videos based on the articles. And I hope you appreciate those. I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.